everyone, welcome back to another weekly cook along video at Yubi Chef. This week we've got a stunning menu for you. On the starters, we've got a smoked haddock chowder with a, a smoked haddock scotch egg and a little bit of tandoori oil. On the main course, we see the return of the goat cheese twice baked souffle with grapes, verju, and walnuts. And finally, on dessert, one of my favourite desserts, a rum barber with a little coconut and rum cream and a citrus, citrus salad. So, unpack your box, set the table, grab a drink, and let's get cooking. First up, we have our weekly bake. This week, we have these mushroom crumpets. And so in the box, we have the mushroom crumpets themselves. On top is just the wild garlic butter. So firstly, we're just gonna remove this and put it to one side and save that for, for a second. To begin with, we're gonna take the crumpets. We're just gonna put these onto an oven tray. And then these are just gonna go into the oven for three to four minutes until they're nice and hot. Or if you have a toaster, just put them in the toaster and toast them like you would normally a crumpet. So we'll be back after the four minutes to plate up. The crumpets have been out of the oven just for a minute or two. They were in there for four to five minutes. We've just placed the butter on top and as you can see, it's just started to melt through that crumpet. To finish them off, we're gonna add these little wild garlic shoots here. And once we've added these wild garlic shoots, we're gonna take them to the table and serve them straight away to enjoy nice and hot with the melting butter. So for the bread course, we have these set crumpets with the wild garlic butter. So first up, the fish starter, we have the smoked haddock scotch egg and a smoked haddock chowder. So we just have the chowder here, and then we have the smoked haddock scotch egg itself. To go with that, we have a tandoori spiced potato, and then a little lovely little tandoori rapeseed oil. So to start with, we're going to put the scotch egg in the oven as it is like that, for 8 to 10 minutes. And with that, the tandoori spiced potato with the lid on is going to go in there. So we're just going to pop those in the oven for 8 to 10 minutes, and then we'll be back to plate this up. So the scotch egg has just been in the oven for 8 to 10 minutes. I'm just going to put it on the side there just to cool down slightly before we start plating. As always, we have our heated serving bowl, and the potatoes have also been heated up and they've just been cooked with the lid on, and we're going to retain them in there. So, we're going to take our scotch egg out first, I'm just going to lightly season that, ready for plating. I'm going to get our smoked haddock chowder. So, this has just been made with all the skin from the um, haddock and all the trim, and we're going to pour that in the centre. So, we're going to get the tandoori potatoes. So these have just been steamed with some tandoori spices until they're just cooked and then we're baking them through the oven and we're just sort of making a little platform for that egg to sit on. Then we're going to go on with the egg. And that just keeps it out of the soup and just almost stops it from going soggy underneath. And to finish it off, we've got the tandoori rapeseed oil. And then we're just going to pour a nice bit of this around and you can really see the contrast in colours when it hits that soup. And then there we have the smoked haddock chowder with the scotch egg and tandoori oil. Meat starts this week, we have a chicken liver parfait with a smoked rabbit loin, rabbit leg samosas and nasturtion. So to start with, we're going to get the samosas and we're going to put them in the oven for five to six minutes until they're just hot. So we're going to do that now and then we'll come back and plate up. The samosas have been in the oven for five to six minutes, so now we're going to plate this up. So to start with, a little tip from the top, what we like to do at the restaurant is whenever we use a dish like this, we use, get a little bit of damp cloth so you can use kitchen right at home and just put that on your serving dish. Then we're going to put the parfait on top and then that just stops it moving around when you take it to the table. You're going to start by getting these samosas and just laying them around the side of the dish, like so. And then we're going to dress the rabbit in a little bit of rapeseed oil and place them on. So the, uh, the rabbit has just been smoked with a little bit of uh, apple wood and you can really smell that while you're plating it up. And we're going to finish this off with some nasturtion leaf. And we're just going to put on top, like so. And we're just going to also add a few little drops of the rapeseed oil. And then this is the meat starter of the chicken liver parfait, smoked rabbit loin, and rabbit legs uh, moses. This week for the vegetarian starter, we have a salt baked celeriac um, carpaccio with a wild mushroom cream, pickled chimichi mushrooms that I've just decanted in here, a lemon thyme and hazelnut dressing. Again, I've just decanted it from the eco bag because we've got those roasted hazelnuts running through there. And then finally, to finish it off, we're going to have some sliced chestnut mushrooms. So to start off the plate of this one, you want to get your plate. I'm just going to put it into the centre here. With all our carpaccios, like we say, invert it first, because you've got a show side and then the, the side you want to place down on the plate. So this is the side we want on the plate. 
I'm just going to flip that over and put that into the centre of our serving plate. And we're going to carefully remove that uh, UB Chef paper. Once we've done that, I'm just going to take the end off our eco piping bag. I'm going to pipe dots of this mushroom cream around, around the carpaccio, like so. Again, you want to spread this out so when you're eating this dish, you get a little bite of everything so then you're not overwhelmed with just one thing. Well, I'm going to leave it at that. Then we're going to get the pickled shimiji mushrooms and place them round. Just putting them in between. Again, with this dish, obviously I'm plating up this way, but at home, feel free to get creative and be the chef and plate it up however you feel looks best on your plate. And then we're going to get the sliced mushroom. I'm just going to stand them on each one of the can put a piece on each one of the bit of the mushroom cream, like so. Just moving them around, placing them on here. Where the um, celeric has been salt baked, I'm not adding in any, any extra seasoning to this dish, as when you salt bake, obviously it draws out that moisture and really makes the celeric a lot more intense in flavour. So adding it might just tip it over the edge. And to finish it off, as you can see, there's those roasted hazelnuts. We're going to put them in and around before getting some of the actual dressing, just to finish it off. So that's going to go round like that. There's some lemon thyme in there as well, along with those roasted hazelnuts. So here we have the carpaccio salt baked celeriac with wild mushrooms and hazelnuts. For the fish main course, we have lime court pollock with a cafe de parry crust, semolina gnocchi, some charred tender stem broccoli, and an oily pratt sauce that's just been made from the pollock bones. So to start with, we're going to put our fish into the oven for 10 to 12 minutes. And once that's been in for a few minutes, we're going to put a semolina gnocchi in without the lid, and then the broccoli is going to go in with the lid loosely retained. So we'll be back in those 10 to 12 minutes to plate this one up. So we're going to plate up our fish main course. We've just got the garnish out of the oven, and I'm just finishing off with the pollock there. Yeah, our heated serving plate, we're just going to put that in front of us. So for the pollock, just get a fish, fish slice and delicately get underneath. We're just going to slide that up and we're going to put that to one side on our serving plate. Like so. Then we're going to get our tender stem broccoli. And we're going to lay it to the other side, crisscrossing over each other. With the tender stem, we've just, we've just blanched it and then we've charred it as well, so you get a nice flavour from it. We're going to go on next with the semolina gnocchi. Just going to place sort of in those gaps left by the broccoli. And we're going to finish it off with the noily fat sauce. So again, like I was saying, this sauce has just been made with the, with the bones from the pollock. And then just reduce that right down reduce some cream and then finish it with the noily crap. And then here we have the pollock with a cafe de parry crust, semolina gnocchi and charred broccoli. For the meat main course, we have this lamb shoulder that's been slow cooked with marjoram and lemon. To go with that, we have these Hasselback potatoes and each they're just in the eco bag with an emulsion a lovely lamb and red wine sauce and cream turnips. So to start this one off, we've got our simmering water and we're just going to drop our lamb into that, put it in there, bring it back to the simmer and that's going to go in for 10 minutes. Once it's come back to the simmer, turn it off, we're going to drop the leeks in and they're going in for the same amount of time. So we'll be back in those 10 minutes to plate it up. So we're just going to plate up the meat main course. So we have the lamb that's just been in the water for 10 minutes. So to start with, we're just going to cut this bag along the top here like so. We're going to lift it onto our plate here. I'm just going to delicately turn it out, and then what we want is it to be be that way round like that, because it's where it's been braised. It's really delicate, so we're just going to leave that there now for a second. Just quickly clear up my mess. To start plating, we're going to get the turnip puree. We're going to just do two little spoons of it, one up the top there, and then one down the bottom. And next up, we're going to get our lamb. We're going to move it as close to the plate as we can. We're just going to get our gazunder. We're going to go underneath like that. And we're just going to put it to the right hand side of our puree. And then just being careful not to spill any of that sauce that's been cooked in. So I'm just going to quickly wash my hands. 
Then to finish plating up, we've got these lovely Hasselback potatoes. So these have just been sliced really thinly. We're going to place them along there like that, and then they're roasted, and they're roasted with a bit of lamb fat, and then as they cook, they start to open up. Then we've got our leeks. They've been cooked in the emulsion, so I've just drained it out, and I'm just going to put it a little bit on this J-cloth. If you haven't got a J-cloth, feel free to use kitchen roll, just to drain off any of that butter that's been cooked in. And we're going to sort of open them up a little bit. We're going to sit one, one in here, and then we're going to have those leaves, and we're going to drag it over like that. We'll go with one more, coming up from the other side this time. And again, just opening it out slightly. You can see that nice char mark on there. And then we're gonna finish off with the sauce around. So this is a sauce that's been made with a lamb stock, then reduced down a few bottles of red wine, some rosemary in there, marjoram, and some lemon as well. We're gonna put a nice spoonful just over the top of that lamb to glaze it up. Then in here we have the slow cooked shoulder of lamb with marjoram and lime, lemon, sorry, Hasselback potatoes and cream turnips. For the vegetarian main course, we see the return of the twice-baked green barn goat's cheese souffle with grapes, tarragon walnuts, a verju sauce and some spinach. So to start this one off, the spinach comes in a bag, so we're going to take it out of its little eco bag, and we're going to put it back into the container it came in, and that's going to be baked with the lid on, uh, for 8 to 10 minutes and then the souffle is going to go in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes. So we're going to put the souffle in first and then we'll be back to plate this one up. So we're about to start plating up the vegetarian main course. The souffle is still in the oven but we want to get the dish plated as, as as soon as it comes out it's going to start to drop. So to start with we're going to get our virgin butter sauce that's just come to the simmer and we're going to put all our gubbins in there. So we've got our grapes, tarragon and our walnut. We're going to get the spinach. This has just been baked in the oven with, with the butter. We're just going to put a spoonful of this in the centre. Then we're going to get our sauce. We're going to start putting that around. So give that a good mix up. And in there you've got the, the blanched walnuts, the different colours of grapes as well. Just try and get a bit of everything as you're plating it up. And the Verju butter sauce as well. So that's made with a grape vinegar. Put those bits round and we'll start getting the sauce on now. So we start. I just go into the centre, pour in the sauce, and then as you can see it starts to spread out around the dish. Once we've done that, we're just going to go out and grab our souffle. That's been baking in the oven. So we're just going to go grab the souffle in a second. So that's in there, go grab our souffle from the oven. Now the souffle's been in for about 10 to 12 minutes. As you can see now, it's started to rise. The topping started to colour. Just before it starts to drop, we're going to get our gazunder and go delicately go underneath, lift it up, and then place it in the centre. And we're going to serve that now before it starts to drop. So here we have the vegetarian main course, the twice baked goat's cheese souffle, tarragon grapes and walnuts. So here we have your first dessert, the rum barber. We've got the rum barber itself. To go with that this week, we've got a citrus salad, so we've got some pink grapefruit, some orange in there, and some candied peel, a rum soaking syrup, a lovely coconut and rum cream, and then the egg cook glaze to finish it off. To start with, we're going to put this into the oven for four minutes, and we're going to get our syrup heating up. So we'll be back in those four minutes to plate this one up. So we're about to plate up the rum barber. It's just come out of the oven, and I've been basting it. I've just been basting it for a few minutes, and it started to increase in size, so that's when we know it's ready. So to start plating the dish, we're just going to leave that in its syrup. We're going to get these segments and we're going to start placing them around our, our serving plate. So we're going to start with the orange and we're going to go over the pink grapefruit and then we're going to alternate the way around just to make a nice little pattern in the bottom of the bowl. So just a few more. We've got some comfy orange and lemon in here but I'm just going to save that for the end. And finally one more great pink grapefruit. So once we've got it in there like that, just put that to one side for now. Take our rum bar and you just want to carefully lift it out of a spoon. And I've just got a drainage cloth. Again, if you don't have a blue, blue cloth, feel free to use a bit of kitchen roll. I'm just going to put one more spoon of that over. And your apricot glaze, that's just been dropped in some water to warm up. I'm just going to get some scissors. And we're going to cut the top off the bag. And we're going to open that up and we're just going to pour some over the top. And then what this does is this just gives the barber a nice little sheen. You see that there, so it's nice and glazed. 
we're going to get our spoon. Again, just carefully, we're going to go underneath, we're going to lift that into the centre of our serving plate. Once it's in there, I've just got a little serrated edge knife, but any, any serrated edge knife will be absolutely fine for this. You just want to cut down, and you just want to carefully open it up like that. We're going to get our coconut cream, I've just taken the end off the piping bag, and we're going to pipe it just in the middle, nestling it in between, and once it comes up like that, this is where the confit peel now comes onto the dish. Just going to put some on top of that cream to finish it off. And if you have any at home, feel free to grab a little shot of rum and pour it over just to give it a little kick. In that syrup that has, we've used a nice rum in there to soak it in. So here we have the rum barber with the coconut cream. Second dessert this week, we have the chocolate Titanic with a peanut center, a raspberry jam gel, some candied peanuts, and a creme fraiche parfait. So to start this one, we're gonna put the Titanic in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes, and then we'll be back to plate this up. So the Titanic has been in for 10 to 12 minutes. We're just gonna plate it up. We're gonna leave it to rest for two minutes before taking it out of the mold. So while we're waiting, we're gonna get the bag of the raspberry jam gel, just take the end off, and we're gonna start garnishing up our parfait to go on the plate. So we're just gonna do little dots of this, going along the parfait, like so. Do one up there and one up there as well. I'm gonna get our candy peanuts. I'm just, take, I'm just gonna take them out of the bowl so it's a bit easier to get them on. I'm just gonna sort of place them in between next to that gel. So with the peanuts, we just cook them in a sugar syrup. And then once they've crystallized, we just deep fry them and you get this really nice, nice texture to them. So I'm gonna put that one on there. Uh, gonna use the fish slice. We're going to go underneath our parfait, we're just going to lift it up and put it to that side. Now we've done that, the souffle would have rested. So to get it out, see it comes with the grease proof, so I'm just going to carefully try and lift it up and get it underneath there and just place it onto our board. I'm going to peel back that grease proof paper and I'm going to get our fish slice again. I'm going to get underneath it, I'm going to put it next to our parfait and then we're going to take it to the table and have a lovely gooey centre. So here we have the chocolate titanic with peanut centre and a creme fraiche parfait.